What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris, and here we explore products, places, and things that help us live a more enjoyable life. Today we're gonna to run through the most requested video that I get, and that is the new Specialized Crux versus the semi-new Specialized Athos. I've logged a little under 700 miles on the Crux, and it's become my go-to bike. It's also become my go-to travel bike. Last week, my family and I went to Yosemite for a couple days and I brought the Crux along in hopes of sneaking away for a quick spin. Unfortunately, the roads were iced over the entire time, so there just really wasn't an opportunity to get out onto the valley floor. The Athos I've only had for a month or so, and I've logged about 400 miles. I've logged enough time on both of these bikes to understand their characteristics, their similarities, their differences in different situations, and have a good idea of maybe where one bike performs better than the other, and if one of them is a one bike solution, or if both of them are a one bike solution, and also if there's room for both of them in your quiver. Now I give this perspective not from a technical engineer standpoint, but from somebody who is a husband, a father, who rides 7,500 miles a year or so, enjoys smashing the pedals on a local group ride, but who also has to hold down a nine to five and isn't collecting a paycheck for riding a bike. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of the new Specialized Crux as well as the Specialized Athos. If not, I've gone ahead and posted a couple links down below in the description that should give you a good idea of what these bikes are all about, as well as some reviews that I found incredibly helpful as I was looking to purchase both of these bikes. For comparison purposes, I'll give you a high level overview of both of these bikes. With the Crux, I bought just the frame set alone. I bought the S-Works frame set and I built it up using existing parts from my open upper that came originally from a Cervelo Aspro. I know that's kind of a mouthful, but in short, it's somewhat of a SRAM Red, SRAM Force mix, ETAP axis. Wheels wise, I am running for gravel a set of the Zip 303 S's with the 43 millimeter Gravel King SS tires. For road, I'm running the NV45 AR disc wheels with a set of 32 millimeter Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sports. I originally built the Crux with a one by drivetrain. The first iteration had a 40 tooth chain ring with a 1052 Eagle cassette. I quickly swapped out that drivetrain for a 5037 with a 1036, and I've now swapped that for a 4835 with a 1036 cassette. For my riding style, this works really, really well. I think if you were to look at stock builds, mine falls somewhere between a Pro and an S-Works, incorporating elements of both. If you want additional details about the build, I'll post a link to my prior videos in the description below. The Athos build was a bit different. This started out as a bone stock S-Works Athos SRAM Red ETAP Axis build, the same one that you see on the website. I quickly started to swap and change a few parts around. The first thing I did was swap the Alpinist CLX wheel set for a pair of NV45 AR disc wheels. Next, I swapped the tires from the Turbo Cottons to 32 millimeter Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sport tires. I then swapped the stem from the SL stem to a Venge stem. Why a Venge stem? Well, because no shops around had the Tarmac stem and the Venge stem was on my Tarmac and so I needed something in 120. Nobody had anything, so I just swapped it over. I actually really like the look of it. I think it looks a little bit tougher, and I'll take like the slight weight penalty on that one. I've now had that stem on Avenge, a Tarmac, and now on the Athos. The next thing I did was swap the saddle. It came with an S-Works Power Carbon saddle. I like a saddle with a little bit more of a nose, so got rid of that saddle, got the Prostel saddle. I really like it. And the last thing that I did was I swapped the chain rings with the Crux. Now the Crux had a 5037, the Athos came with a 4835. To me it makes more sense to have a 5037 on the road and a 4837 on gravel. So I just swapped the crank sets or chain rings and now I've got a 5037 on the Athos and a 1033 cassette in the rear. And I think it's a great, great setup. Let's get into the fun stuff. Let's start with weight. You can't talk about either of these bikes without talking about weight. If you go on the specialized website or look at any of the marketing material for the Athos, you will see photos of clouds and feathers and like the sky. I mean, they want you to basically believe that this bike is made of helium. And if you look at the Crux, it also touts that it's like the lightest gravel bike ever made. And it's incredibly light, don't get me wrong. When I first saw it at Sea Otter, the way that they had it up was like this scale. And on one side, they had the Crux frame, and on the other side, 
they had a partially filled water bottle just to show you how light this frame set was. So look, love or hate specialized. Their marketing department is really, really good and has an enormous budget. They do a good job. Let's start with the Athos. And for you weight weenies or weight conscious riders out there, you're probably already pulling your hair out just listening to these decisions that I've made in the name of aerodynamics. And if so, you may wanna plug your ears for this next part. My current Athos build comes in at a whopping 15.5 pounds. The bulk of that weight increase can be found in the wheels and tires, followed by the crank set, a little bit in the stem and a little bit in the saddle swap. All that being said, my original Athos build wasn't this super duper ultra light sub 14 pound build. Don't get me wrong, it was light, but it wasn't quite as light as what was claimed. I can only believe that the incredibly light sub 14 pound build must be with Dura SDI 2 because with SRAM Red ETAP Axis, I was definitely not under 14 pounds and as soon as you add pedals, you're well into 14 pounds. Look, it's still a super light bike. I'm okay with the minor weight increase in exchange for aerodynamics. I didn't buy this bike because it was incredibly light. More on that later. The weight on the Crux came in a little bit closer to what you'd expect. Even with the drivetrain swap in gravel mode with the heavier wheels, it comes in at just under 18 pounds. And if you swap out the heavy Zip 303S wheels for the NV45 AR disc, or you put it in road mode as I've called it, you're right about 17 and a half pounds. Not too bad for a gravel bike, especially considering the Diverge, which is probably its closest comparison, is north of 20 pounds, and really not too shabby for a decent road bike as well. Aesthetically, I think the Crux is a beautiful bike. I'm a big fan of like individual style when it comes to kits and bike frames, and so I like that Specialized provided options beyond just the normal like black with matte lettering or black with white lettering. Don't get me wrong, I think there's a place for that and it's clean and my Athos has that, but I really like that they did some louder frames with the Crux. I also like just looking at the Crux frame. I think it looks really good. It looks sporty, it looks fast. The round tubes have like a classic look to them, but it almost looks like a tarmac. If you put them next to each other, it looks like maybe there's some tweaks there. In fact, when you ride the Crux, it's very easy for those around you to mistake it for a road bike. It's not until you get up close to the crux, especially if you look at the tire clearance, that you may say, wow, is this a road bike or is this a gravel bike? It's that good. <laughs> Aesthetically, the Athos, yeah, that's a bike that really has taken some time to grow on me. When I first saw it, I immediately wrote it off. I just wasn't into it. Like exposed cables, that slanted top tube. I, what are we back in like 2015? You have to understand, I came from a long line of aero bikes. The first generation Venge, the Venge Vias, I had a Cervelo S5 in there. I had a couple Venge discs. Then I had the Tarmac SL7. And really like I was kind of in that aero as everything camp and I just kind of like really liked that look. But frankly, I'm kind of a little bit burned out on that look. And I think that's one of the reasons why I started to become attracted to the Athos is because it was just different. I mean, I'd go on these group rides and everybody had an aero bike whether you raced or whether you were fast or whether you were literally just getting into the sport, you had an aero bike. And I think the look is getting a little bit played out. And so for me, the Athos really started to appeal to me. I like the classic look of it. Parts of it are still growing on me, but I really, really like the Athos. I think it looks fantastic. Okay, okay, enough with weight, enough with aesthetics. Let's talk about how these bikes ride and how these bikes handle, which is infinitely more important. We'll start with the Crux. Off-road, in gravel, the Crux is really just in its element. It's light, it's fast, it's responsive, it's nimble, it tracks really well, it corners really well. The longer wheelbase makes it feel more stable than you'd imagine, and the frame really absorbs a lot of that gravel chatter, making for a really comfortable and nice ride while still remaining incredibly responsive. Comparing it to the Open Upper and the Cervelo Aspro that I've had, I'd say it's the sportiest of all three of those, with the Aspero being kind of on that side of like a bike packing bike, a little bit more sluggish. For me, this is the most fun bike that I own. And whenever I think about riding it, I get excited. I mean, I truly do. The Crux is just fun and it's fast. I mean, for me, I'm riding six miles to dirt, riding seven or eight miles in dirt, and then I'm riding another six or seven miles home on the road. So I want a bike that's going to get me to the dirt quickly, get me across the dirt quickly, and then get me home quickly. One of my big complaints about some of these other gravel bikes, and even like 
a mountain bike, right? If we could bring that into the comparison, which I rode today, I rode my Epic, and I did the trail that I would normally do on my Crux. And you know what? Just getting to the dirt is like a task. I'm riding at 15, 16 miles an hour on the Epic. It's just not enjoyable. And so when two thirds of my ride is spent on the road, on a bike that is made to go off-road, it's just not fun to ride a bike that is sluggish, a bike that's not really fast, not really responsive. And that's where I think the Crux kind of bridges that gap and makes it a fun all around ride so you don't dread riding to the trail. It's just a fantastic bike and it rides really, really well, as you'd expect from a bike that costs $12,000. On the road, the Crux is a contender. If I swap out my Zip 303S wheels with the larger tires for the NV45 AR disc with the street tires, I've got myself a pretty decent road bike. I call this configuration road mode and I've ridden the Crux like this on a handful of road group rides and it, do, it does just fine, really. 90% of the time, you can ride the Crux on the road and you're not gonna feel like it holds you back at all. For a guy my size, it's not until I get up to around seven, 800 watts when I'm out of the saddle climbing or trying to sprint for some county line sprint finish that I feel the limitations of the Crux. It doesn't feel quite as responsive. It doesn't feel quite as nimble as something like the Athos. And when you're cornering, it's not quite as sharp. I mean, I wouldn't expect it to be. What makes it so great on gravel is that it's a little bit more forgiving. Unfortunately, it doesn't really necessarily translate to the road, but it still makes for a decent ride. And I think for 90% of the riding that you do or I do, on road, I think the Crux is just fine, but it does have a few limitations. Let's talk about the Athos focusing on road first. I'm just gonna come out and say it, the Athos is the best handling road bike I have ever ridden, even better than the Tarmac SL7. And that's saying a lot because I love the SL7. I'll save deeper thoughts for another video. The Athos road feel is incredible. It somehow eats up a lot of the road chatter but still remains lively and snappy in a way that I've never felt on any other bike. The Athos handles in corners like it's on rails, yet it has this like element of forgiveness. When you go into a corner, it feels very planted, it feels very solid and stable, unlike any high-end road bike I've ever ridden. When it comes to climbing, of course, they've touted this as like the amazing climbing bike, and it is. I mean, you hop out of the saddle, and climb and it feels really, really good, just like you would expect from any five-figure bike. I think comparing it to the Crux, the Athos rides like a true high-end road bike. I mean, it's fast, it's responsive, where there's lag with the Crux, you simply don't have that with the Athos. It's super nimble, it's super fast, and it's incredibly responsive on the road. And you feel like every single watt that you put into the pedal translates onto the road and accelerates you and propels you forward. The Athos is just a, a 10 out of 10 bike, in my opinion, on the road. Off-road, the Athos is, well, it's still a road bike. This is where the idea of the Athos being a single bike solution for road and gravel kind of unravels a little bit for me. I understand there are some people riding the Crux like an Athos, and there are others riding the Athos like a Crux, but I can't say that I would recommend that. Sure, if you go on the Specialized website, you'll see a group of riders on an Athos, and they're on this fire road, and they're smiling and having a great time. I think that's fine if you're just on a fire road, just like I think it's fine if you take a tarmac or a Super 6 or a TCR on a light gravel road. I think you'll be just fine on a road bike like that. Anything more technical than that, I think you find yourself in a little bit of trouble. Now you could argue, look Chris, maybe you just need to improve your bike handling skills. And look, if I put Vanderpool in the Athos, I bet that guy could just rip up and down every single gravel section around. Yes, that's probably true in the same way that a 911 with BFG KO2 tires could probably go off-roading. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's meant to go off-roading. Which one of these bikes is best for you? Well, these bikes are both best in class in their respective categories. The answer though really depends on your riding style. If you're riding 95% road and 5% light, mellow gravel, you might be able to get by with just the Athos. As soon as you start shifting to more gravel or more technical terrain, I think you'll find the limitations of the Athos very quickly, and you'd probably be best suited for a Crux. That's not to take away from the Athos, it's a fantastic bike. I just don't think that there's as much crossover 
with the Athos as you find with the Crux. Does it make sense to have both an Athos and a Crux? Now I understand having multiple bikes is a total luxury, but I think these bikes are different enough to where you could justify having both bikes. I would say that the Athos is more tarmac and that the Crux is more diverge. So I think the question really is, can you have a road bike and a gravel bike? And if the answer is yes, I think these are two great bikes that you should consider. If you're looking for a one bike solution, I still feel like the Crux is the way to go, especially if you can add a second wheel set. If you're like me and you're a guy who just wants to get off the road so you can be away from cars, so you're getting a gravel bike and you're not really concerned with bike packing, the Crux is totally the way to go. And I think it's a much more enjoyable bike to ride as a whole than some of these other gravel bikes with more slack geometry that are a little more sluggish and a little more towards like that bike packing, bike camping end of the gravel bike spectrum. Look, both of these are incredible bikes. I hope my experience has helped you kind of decide between an Athos and a Crux, or maybe you just want to get both bikes. I think you'll be stoked either way. Next, I'm going to be doing an Athos versus Tarmac comparison. If you like this video, give it a like, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, drop me a line on Instagram. I'll link my handle down below. Thanks so much. Until next time, peace.